We are at a critical juncture for the environment at this point, where some of us have to actively fight our own governments to protect it. Um, recent studies show that we have reason to be worried. That is because a study published um, in Science shows that 11.1 billion pieces of plastic are affecting the wow. coral reefs in the Pacific, in some instances killing them, in some instances, instances irrecoverably. Mm -hmm. So um, plastic is something that's interesting because it lasts for a long time. It doesn't mm -hmm. break down uh, like maybe cardboard would. And it carries pathogens with it and then it gets stuck on things, yeah. specifically the coral reef. Yeah, and I was, I was surprised to find out that it's actually, it can be abrasive enough that it creates like micro incisions and stuff like that, that the bacteria and all that stuff could get in there to make it sick. Um, reading about it, like we, we know that, that trash in the, the oceans is a big deal. We know about the big floating trash patches and everything. And the, the cool stuff about when it's floating at least is that there's some ideas that are still somewhat speculative about how we could gather it up. Mm -hmm. But once it's down in there, mixed in with coral, and it's in the billions, it, it gets, for me at least, to the scale of a problem that like I can't imagine how we deal with it. I mean, we, we're not just gonna be like walking through the coral spearing trash every once in a while. I we're think, not gonna recover billions <laughs> of pieces. I think the trick is to produce less plastic trash in our ocean. But it's already in there. I, I, it's a lost cause. No, it's saying. not. I'm no, totally it's not because in a lot of instances, if you remove the plastic, which carries the pathogens, which cause uh, potentially deadly, sickening uh, bacteria to the mm. coral reef. Uh, for instance, it's it's known to cause diseases including skeletal eroding band, um, different diseases in white syndromes, and black band disease, and. And a lot of them, if you simply remove the plastic, it will it will improve and mm. recover. In some cases, like in bleaching, it's yeah. not it's not going to get better. Yeah, but how do you how do you remove billions of pieces? I mean, look, my, instantly I I start to think of well, what if we produce some sort of bacteria that can get in there and get it, or if we, we uh, mass produce like some sort of fish or other you know animal that will eat it, and that seems possible, but then. We know that those sorts of things that when we try to control the environment have ripple effects and have other perhaps negative consequences. I think right now the solution is to reduce this, mm -hmm. specifically through regulation. Mm -hmm. And that's simply not going to happen, at least in this. In the next couple of years. In the next, yeah. yeah. I like how you said couple and not three. Well, you never know. Well, yeah. <laughs> Maybe seven. I don't know. Oh. Um, but yeah, it, it does seem like it does seem like a big issue. And I know that like I try to be I try to be good to the environment, but I go through Amazon for a lot of my purchases and a lot of that stuff does have plastic packing material in it. Mm -hmm. I console myself in believing that most of it will just end up in a landfill for the rest of time. Oh, that's, Which isn't as bad, I guess. I don't know about that. Maybe we'll burn it. <laughs> that would be better, I guess. I think you're making me sad. No, it's better than to go into the ocean. It's gotta go somewhere. Is it though? I think so. I think reducing and reusing and recycling no, is yeah, a that's great way better. to close yes, the loop. Yes, obviously that's better. I'm just saying if it's gonna end up somewhere, keep it out of regulation. the water. Regulation. Audience, what are you doing to reduce the amount of uh, plastic and other sorts of trash that you produce on a daily basis?